So we are going live. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Today, I have a very special guest. As you can see, his name is Paluku, and he is from Uganda. He is a, a Koika student. He is a, an agricultural scientist, and he is studying at Kyompok National University in Daegu, South Korea. Like I said, he is a an agricultural scientist. He's going to share with us his experience, the process that he went through to secure the Koika scholarship to come and do his master's here in South Korea. But first, before I bring in my guest, let's look at what Koika is all about. If we look at this form, it's a uh, frequently asked questions about Koika. I think I should share my screen with you so that everyone can like see it. All right, can you see my screen? Yeah, I can see it. You can can you can you like read the 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 the, the word file? Are you able to... to Okay, yeah, I can now read the well. Okay, so this is the Koika frequently asked questions. Mm. It's just what Koika is all about. Like it says here, Koika is a Korean government agency that supports government of partner countries to achieve socioeconomic development. And it provides training with a view to building the capacity of civil servants. Therefore, COICA scholarship program is for government employees. Yeah, it has been clearly stated there that COICA scholarship is for government employees, which means you must be working for your home government. And not just your home government, but your home government or your country should be in the list of countries that are partnering with COICA. If you want to know more about the list of countries that are partnering with COICA, you might want to check a video that I posted a few days ago about the COICA scholarship. You would have the list of countries that are beneficiary of this scholarship and what are the eligibility requirements. But in this video today, I decided to bring in Mr. Faluko, so that he can like share with us how he went about getting himself ready for this scholarship and what were the secrets that he was able to deploy in order to succeed in this scholarship. Welcome, bro. Thank you so much. So can you like please give a brief intro introduction of yourself? Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, what okay. I mean so, is I'm Mwada Farouk from Uganda and currently okay. studying at Chung National University as a Koika on a Koika scholarship. Thank you. Okay. So like you heard him, he is from Uganda and he is under Koika scholarship here in South Korea. So I have a list of questions that here that I might want to like ask to my guests because I believe it might help somebody out there who might be thinking about applying for Koika scholarship because when I posted videos on Koika scholarship, I had until like yesterday, Saturday, January the 14th, I had a question from somebody who was like asking what is the selection procedure, but I don't think he will be able to like tell us about this selection procedure, but from the questions that we will ask in this video, we might kind of have a bit of idea as to what we can do so that we can be successful in this scholarship. So the first question that I have is, did you authenticate your documents? If yes, which documents and what were the steps that you followed? Thank you so much. Actually, most of uh, the students, when they are applying for this scholarship, they get somehow confused because the, the scholarship always lists down, not only this one, but even most of the Korean scholarship, they always tell you, send the original documents. Now, in okay. the original documents, actually, they mean authenticating them. They don't mean okay. that you should hand in your original certificate from the university. So for me, the procedure I went through uh, first of all, you have to start with your university, your former university. You get your transcript. 
then photocopy okay. them. After photocopying them, you take them to the university, to your former university. Then the university will stamp on the, on the photocopy. Now that means the university have certified them. Now after okay. that, you take them to foreign affair. For Uganda, we usually go to foreign affair. You should know in a different country maybe different procedures, but in most of the countries, after the university, you take it to foreign affair. Then foreign affair will also certify by stamping on the same document, the photocopy where the university stamped. Now, after the university confirming that indeed these are our documents, and then the the foreign affair also confirmed that this is our this this is the document from Uganda and is certified by the university. Then there you take them to the Korean embassy. Now at the Korean embassy, you hand in them there. In most cases, it takes a few days, one to two or three, and then they stamp. Then they always ask around the $10 or $6 to certify those documents. It's so not that much is so are you trying to say that when you take it to your university for your university to kind of put their stamps on it, it is free in Uganda? No, you, you pay some money. Every stamp you pay. Okay. You pay to the official account of the university. For the case of my university, you pay around one dollar. Okay. And at the level of foreign affairs in your country? The level of foreign affairs still you pay. At foreign affairs in my country, you pay around the four dollars. So here you're talking about Ministry of your Ministry of Foreign Affairs, right? Yeah. Okay. So the process is you go first to your university, and then from your university, they would have to put their stamps. You take it to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Yeah. They would equally put their stamps on the photocopy, not the original. Not the original. The photocopy. But you would have you would have to equally present the original. Exactly. Okay. And then after you must have taken it to the university and then to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the next thing is you take it now to Korean Embassy. Is it Korean Embassy or Consulate? No, Korean Embassy. It depends. If in your country you don't have a Korean Embassy, then maybe a Consulate. But for my case, it's Korean Embassy. Okay. And at the Embassy, you take still the, the photocopied one and the original. Then the Embassy will find out, maybe we'll call the university, we will also analyze more to, not to confirm whether these documents are original. Okay, so it is the the documents that have been stamped by both your university and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the photocopies that you will take and then go and hand it to the Korean Embassy plus your original? Yes. Okay. So what are the documents to be precise? Pardon? Trans what are the exact documents that you're supposed to authenticate? Yeah, in most cases, all of the academic documents, but specifically for COICA, they prefer more the university documents. Let's say you have a bachelor, then you have to put the certificate and then the transcript. You okay. don't just need to certify only the transcript, all of them, the certificate and the transcript. Okay, altogether. so let's, let's say you have, maybe you spent four years in the university, you have four different transcripts for four different years. You take all of them? Yes, exactly. Okay, all right. So how long did it take from your university to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and then to Korean Embassy for all of that process to be completed? Actually, I, I always advise uh, those who are willing to apply for this scholarship before, like immediately in January, you start certifying your document because it depends on the country. Some offices are in holidays. You go to certify and they tell you the person responsible for that is not allowed. Is okay. coming back next month. You get so you have to prepare. And if you know that in next year in January I'm targeting Koika scholarship, then at least you have to start the process of certifying your paper in time. However, for the case of my country, it's quick. Uh, at the university, it took me one day, foreign affair, one day, and the embassy, three days. That's one week it was all done. Oh, wow, that's fast. Yeah. I know in other countries, to certify documents, it can take like a month. Yeah, true. 
yeah, like you go and leave it at, you go to the university, it takes some days or weeks, go to the foreign affairs, take some days or weeks, embassy equality takes some weeks because they have to like verify before they put the uh, authentication stamp on it. Okay, so we've talked about the documents, we've talked about how long it takes. Okay, did you write a statement of purpose? And if yes, what did you write? Like give us a bit of brief tips, not too much yeah actually this this is where it starts from really this is a very very important stage and the, a lot of uh, students confuse this part and the, it's very important it determines a lot a lot but yeah I, I remember my first statement of purpose that i wrote after two years, I, I went and read, read through it and I was like, what is this? What was I writing even? <laughs> it, was, it was so funny that nobody could select me then. However, when you are writing, writing a statement of purpose, you know, you know the word purpose itself can describe. So you must say, be with a genuine purpose. Now you, you start with you. What's your passion? Like, uh, what made you be interested in that specific course anyway? So you have to show them arms and so, like for my case, I'm doing agriculture. So I had to tell them, uh, I was born in a, a, a family, a country family, where we do farming every day, kind of, mm -hmm. but not too much of yourself. That's right. Then after that, I grew up doing agriculture and all that stuff. So I, I gained passion for doing agriculture and I did it at the university and you continue. So they, they, are, they are seeing a genuine passion in you. Then after that, you have to also uh, talk about your country. It's okay, not you alone. You, they are giving you a scholarship for you to gain the knowledge and help your country. But okay. even before giving it to you, they must be sure that you have passion in that uh, course. Then after knowing that you have passion in that cause, then they want you to see how you relate that knowledge you gain to your country. Will you really help your country? So now you have to focus. Now you talk about yourself. For example, for my case, I am interested in agriculture. I grew up doing agriculture. I have been doing A, B, C, D in agriculture section. I've been working here, here in agriculture section. Now my country employs 80% in agriculture. Agriculture contributes so much to the GDP. And my country lacks blah blah. Like they we are still using subsistence farming. We are still not exporting enough. We are even importing more agricultural products. All these are challenges facing my country. And I believe we need experts like me, blah blah. Kind of. Like exactly. there you bring in from you to your country. And then lastly, you have to relate it to the course you are going to do. Because you can't say, okay, I'm interested in so so and I'm planning to help my country like this. But when you are studying something contrary. So before even you write the statement of purpose, you must go to the website of that university, get detailed information about that course. Exactly. And then get to know what they teach. Exactly. All the course out train. Now, after knowing the course out train, you will know that this course, they say smart farming, they say uh, yeah, food safety, and then you start relating them with the challenges you are having in the country. Then, in the statement of purpose, you can list a few three, four, or five that like, like I, I, I hope to gain knowledge in, in this and this and this, and because of the challenge so in my country it will be solved in this and this way so they want to see the purpose so if you give them the purpose that really us setting up this scholarship will help the developing country to grow because that's the purpose to, to why they are setting up that scholarship to see that developing countries can grow so they want to see the a project idea in your mind yeah specifically that and also you should not forget to 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 show the, the 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 strengthening of the relationship between you and Korea, because now after you it's your country, the course, and then Korea. Then you can summarize 
you can do it on your own way. In most cases, we are not perfect. Some people say my statement of purpose was so perfect. It may be the reason to, it may not be the reason to why that person was selected. So you must sit and feel that really I have wrote a statement of purpose, and you can see that there is a purpose in your statement. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think what you're saying is it's one hundred percent correct because I remember talking to somebody about uh, the Global Korea Scholarship. That is a scholarship that is offered by South Korean government. And a lot of people kind of minimize the importance of, uh, of a statement of purpose and why scholarships are given. For example, COICA gives scholarship to the countries that are in partnership with COICA because it wants to help in the socioeconomic development of their country, of, your, of that member country. Which means if you decide to apply for a COICA scholarship, you should first know the reason for that scholarship. And then secondly, the major that you are applying for, how is that major going to be beneficial to your home country? Which means you should be able to know the challenges that your home country faces because you working in that sector, it means you already know the challenges. And then the next thing is that for you to succeed, you need to know the major know the course outline, know the knowledge that you would gain from the, that, that particular program, and then try to explain how that knowledge that you will gain from that particular program, you would be able to use it after you must have finished your training to help in improving the socioeconomic development of your home country, because that is the sole purpose of COICA scholarship. Um, a global career scholarship equally has its own purpose. So you have to be able to try to tie the purpose of that scholarship and the knowledge that you would gain from the program that you're studying and how you'll be able to use it to better the condition of your home country because there is always a reason as to why they give those scholarships. That being said, let's go to the third question. The next one is, did you submit a letter of recommendation? If yes, how many was required? by your program and who provided you with the letters of recommendation? Okay, thank you. Uh, for the letter of recommendation, always COICA have their format in the form when you download the forms and you're applying for a scholarship. They always put a form of recommendation they need. So the person who is recommending you will, will write uh, or answer the questions in that form. However, for, for my case, it was my employer who gave me the recommendation. Not your university. One, yeah, and it was the one supposed to write in that form. Now, after writing that form, for my case, I felt it's not enough. So he attached another one-page recommendation letter of his own, which he drafted well. A, a, a describing me a bit and my relationship and the, my ability. And then he attached together theirs and his. Then he attached together and he, he sealed. Yeah, in okay. most if cases, I... you, if possible, you have, because Koiko is recommended, the recommendation data must be sealed. You are not allowed to, to see it. However, okay. you should talk to the person recommending you. You read it through. Because uh, uh, my friend, one, my, one of my friends was applying and he, uh, the, his recommender told him to read it through. And, you know, Koika asked always, what's the weakness of this person? So uh, the recommender who was recommending my friend had, had written that he's not a good, he's a, he's not a good timekeeper. Then I told, I told my friend in Korea, this is a major issue. They can even not give you because of this. But for mm -hmm. him, he thought it's right. So it's always better to be in relationship with person writing your recommendation letter that you read it through. Because now for you, you have read through the, the, the pro program, the, the program, you know what they exactly need. Exactly. So you can request and say, oh, please, uh, can, uh, can you change at least this part? Maybe write like this if possible in a polite way. So that you are sure that this recommendation will play a great part for your case. Okay, so what you're saying is that 
you were recommended by your employer, like maybe somebody who is senior in your office, like the government office that you work at. Yeah. And then normally the COICA recommendation form is small. The space for the recommendation is small. So the person could not write enough information about you. So he filled out the space in the COICA recommendation and then wrote in another separate continued in another separate document to write more about you and then at that level of strength okay actually you are like saying that it is good to have a good relationship with your with somebody who is like senior with you so that he can be able to like give you the document so that you can read and see if this is going to work in your favor and then where you might feel like it might not work in your favor you can like tell him maybe boss i think here might work in my disfavor so if you have that relationship they can like let you see the document and based on the fact equally that coica document is small you felt like it wasn't enough so you asked him to write more in an extra document he wrote more in an extra document and you were able to read and were like convinced that at least this might help you in getting the the scholarship and then after you were like okay i think this is okay he now took it and then put it inside an envelope and seal it because Koika recommendations are supposed to be sealed. They're not yes, supposed exactly. to be open for you to see it, right? Yeah. Because actually recommendation is supposed to be something secret. It's supposed to be between the recommender and where it is going to, which means the person recommending you and the Koika office are the only ones that are supposed to know about the document. Right. Yes, exactly. And more addition is that uh, let's for for my case, I was uh, I work with the research center, Makerere University National Agricultural Research Center. But you you have to deal with the top person in that organization. Let's say you are working at the district, then the person who is recommending you must be the top person at the district. For my case, it was the director. The director. Okay. So so you can't say okay. The director is there, the deputy director, and all the protocol. And then you go to your next. They say, uh, uh, they say you are at level five, and then you go to level six. Three or four. You. Okay, you, get, you don't uh, go down. You have to you use the top person. Okay. Yeah, prefer the, the director or the head of the district or the head of that institution. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now. So how many recommendation letters did you give? Just one? Yeah, just that one. But what about the university? Don't they require- The university require uh, did not give any recommendation, but they give, uh, you know, you have to confirm with the English test. Okay. So they wrote, they wrote a letter confirming that uh, our program is conducted in English and then that person can co communicate well in English and then that was it. So are you like trying to tell me that the university might request an English proficiency, maybe IELTS, any of those documents, even if, for example, you studied in English, if the university or maybe your research institute can like write to prove that English is your me medium of communication, it's fine? Yeah, yeah exactly. Actually, in, in most of the countries in Africa, even though they are asking for an uh, English test exam or TOEFL, TOEFL mm -hmm. you, you can, they put that option. You can always go to your former university, then the former university will write a letter and stamp it, confirming that actually in that country, it, a learning is conducted in English from the beginning to the end. Okay. Confirming that you can communicate well in English because you took that bachelor in, 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 uh, in using English as a communication medium. So okay. that letter confirms and replaces the the exam. Like I TOEFL, yeah, the official yeah. English examinations. That one yeah. replaces yeah. them. Okay, okay. Let's go to. So you already answered the question recommendation letter. And you equally talked about test in English. Okay, did you provide any employment certificate? Yes, you have to. They they need it because they have to confirm that you are employed. That you so are you have you must that. But uh, 
for me, what I attached was the employee appointment letter. Okay. Or contract. You must attach a appointment letter or contract, something like that. But for my case, I attached the appointment letter showing I was appointed in this period. Because Koika to give you, you must have worked with that organization not less than two years. Ah, uh, okay. So you must yeah. have gained so, some work experience for a period of time before you can apply for Koika, at least two years. Yes. Yes. So now they will have to, to see when were you appointed. So they prefer more the appointment letter. Okay. So you must yeah. have an appointment letter or an employment letter that states yes. the date when you were employed or appointed to work yes. in that government institution. And yes. to see to make sure that you've been working with them for at least a time span of like two years or more before you yes. can yeah. So another yeah, so, thing mm. another thing with date, I think it's uh age. There is an age limit, right? Pardon? Age limit. Is there an age limit? Yeah, they they consider four and below. <laughs> okay. So you yeah, be beyond forty they down. don't take. They don't take. Okay. Yeah. All right. Anything else that you wanted to say about the employment letter? The employment letter? Anything else that you want to add about employment letter? Yeah. Do you have anything else to ask? Yeah. Employment letter, you have to convince. For example, there are people who are really willing to apply for this scholarship, but they have not worked with that, that workplace where they are for two years. Oh, now, for, okay. for this case, that's why I always tell people the relationship you have with your worker is the, is the key. So now you you can go and convince the director that please they need the work experience for two years. But I have worked here for only one year. But I'm still continuing to work here. This is a chance that I can't lose. Then it will be personal. This person can decide to write two years that you have worked with them two years, just in favor of you and in favor of that organization. Because once yeah. you get that knowledge, you come back to that organization. You and use it in the organization. True. Yeah. It makes some sense. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the next one is, what was the procedure for you to be nominated? For example, I know that in some country, for example, like in Cameroon, mm -hmm. where I come from, I know that it is the ministry, the ministry that does the selection. For example, Let's say Koika has many programs, like here in, in Daegu, Kyongpok National University, it's agriculture, there is education, there is IT in, Pyong, in Pohang, and then there is IT also in Sunshi. There are like the, about 40 something programs in different universities, right? So, for example, if you want to come and study agriculture or education, it means you are under the Ministry of Education in Cameroon, or you're the, under the Ministry of Agriculture in Cameroon. That would mean you would have to submit your application file to your Ministry of Education or Agriculture, and then they will do the selection, decide among the, the number of files that they've received. They will decide now which people will be selected and sent to COICA office. And then COICA will then look at the files and then do their own selection as well before they conduct an interview with you to do their own final selection now what is the process in rwanda uh, so sorry in uganda yeah in anyway uganda, rwanda I, I, uganda your neighbors yeah, yeah we are neighbors i i really feel sorry for those guys because now it if it's the ministry to select and then send the colleague also select it can be hard but for the case of uganda they advertise. You go to Koika Facebook website, and then you see the advert. Then you download the for the forms according to the university you're interested in, and then you fill in those forms. Now, mm -hmm. after filling in those forms, getting all the recommendations required and everything, certifying the document, getting your packed well, then you go to the foreign affair. Like for example, for me, I'm in. I'm in the section of education because I'm working at the university. Okay. Uh, but I didn't go through the Ministry of Education. So after comparing my things, I get the, the recommendation from the university I'm working with. 
it's at the organization level the institute alone can do that and then you go to the next level and that's the foreign affair mm -hmm. now it's the foreign affair to go through your documents and then recommend you again that's now the second recommendation which you need the oh. recommendation from foreign affair now the coica will pick the documents that foreign affair has selected and then take them for the next level so in uganda Wait. that's the procedure so are you like saying that foreign affairs can actually reject some files yeah they have the right but they mostly don't reject because they okay. yeah but they have that right if they reject it's there because they have the 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 the, the, the ability to do so and the right because they have recommend you so it means they must know you very well because whatever you do in, whatever you do in korea if something happened they will refer to them okay so they have the right to say this one is not eligible and you are not and you can't complain it anyway okay so if i understand is it the minister of foreign affairs that is sending your files to koika or they would so they are the ones sending your files to koika it's yeah it's, it's for an affair we don't hand over our files to koika it's for an affair that's handing our files to koika oh okay I see. yes all right okay so if minister of foreign affairs sends your files that means they've nominated you for koika if they don't send ah, your file they have yeah. decided that maybe you're not too good so they if, kind if, of do the selection if if foreign affairs send you a fa fail to koika mm -hmm. then it means you have passed that stage but if the fails reach koika of course koika also have select and then send to the university and then the university also select so a lot of steps if you are cut off then you are done yeah, <laughs> yeah. i think the process is the same in cameroon though but okay. the process like the process to legalize to authenticate your documents is the same I think you okay. have to go to the Ministry of Education, um, uh, your university, go to Ministry of Education, and then maybe go to Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and then you end at, uh, at it ends at Korean Embassy, and then from Korean Embassy, it goes now to Koika. But the selection is mostly done at the level of the ministries. Okay. which means they can like do the rejection okay yeah okay now the next one you said you failed in your first attempt to secure this scholarship what do you think would have been the reason for not succeeding during your first attempt uh actually uh it's hard to know the reason yeah but i think you kind i think you kind yeah. of mentioned it though your statement of purpose like when you went back and looked at it because I think the statement of purpose is key. No, that because... that that one was uh, when I was applying for another scholarship. Actually, this time I even used the same statement because I was like, ah, these things maybe I will again be rejected. So I, in most cases, I used almost the same information. I changed very little bit. However, I think it was the one reason. Uh, it was a, for a few reasons. Maybe one of them is because of Corona. Because okay. they, they used to bring a lot of students uh, on Koika scholarship, but that year they brought very few, really very few. And then secondly, I think uh, maybe because of gender also, you know, I I have been following Koika scholarships. If you are competing with a lady, a lady get extra points before oh. even. So it's oh, hard okay. to compete okay. with a girl. Okay. But uh, that's not the case. If you're outstanding, they will still take you. So generally, was, you, can't, you can't know the reason. That was for the 2021 application, I guess. Yes, 2001. They brought one Ugandan for this program. But this year, they brought three. Oh. Yeah. For so, agriculture in Kenya? Yes, they brought three. But last time, oh. they brought only one. Yeah, because even when uh, there is this guy from Uganda, Arnold, he he left last December. He was the only one at Kenya. Yeah, I think he should. He might have been the 2020 
selection. Yeah. But I think by that period, I think the major issue was Corona. They were not a bit curious and they didn't maybe want a lot of people. I don't know. But it might be the one of the reasons. Ah, okay. Yeah. All right. So this is our last and final question. Because and another to... issue on that. Uh, uh, you know, when most of the students are rejected, maybe it's the reason to why I was selected again this year. Okay. Because okay. once I got my rejection email, I All took right. my time and replied it, thanking them for interviewing me, for allowing me the opportunity to try my luck. And I ended saying, I have hope that one day I will be studying that university and one day I will meet you. Thank you so much for the time, blah, blah. So you don't, you don't just see the message and then don't even reply or reply rudely. Oh. You, you shouldn't lose hope. You keep trying. So you always yeah. have to be polite in every, every, every way of uh, yeah. positive or negative. You have to keep the positivity. Yeah, I think that is a good idea. You got rejected. You got sent a rejection email. You took the time to reply them, thanking them for giving you the opportunity to at least apply for the scholarship, but you still kept the hope, told them that you're keeping the hope that you would succeed in fulfilling that dream of studying in KNU someday, and it yeah. happened the next time. Thank you very much for that. Okay, the next one, this is going to be our last question. Yeah. Any tips that you can share with our viewers to help them succeed in Quaker Scholarship Application 2023? Yeah. Uh, first of all, uh, if there is a viewer watching this video, it means you are wise enough. And that's the starting point. You see it starts from the brain and then it goes into action. So if you okay. took your time to watch this, then you are doing the first thing and you are the right person. And the, then secondly, uh, I always tell uh, those applying for scholarships, it's, a, it's always a trial. You keep trying, you don't give up. I was rejected and I tried the same university again. So you keep trying. And also you try to run some few Korean lessons if you go for an interview. At least introduce yourself in Korean. You can just cram a few statements, telling them your name, uh, greeting them, telling them your name, and something few. That introduction for a Korean, they can get more, more in place. To hear that somebody who have never stepped in Korea can at least introduce himself or herself in Korean language. And then second, that they prefer somebody who is smart. Please go to for an interview when you are smart. Don't go with t-shirts and so on. You have to, to look smart and you be humble. Korean respects a lot. So you have to be humble and be a bit polite, but loud and clear. And don't... So don't talk at a terrible speed because they their English is a bit little. They will they will be shaking the head but not understanding you. So you must be loud and clear, smart but polite and respecting. They prefer that so much. Yeah. So uh what was I going to say? You got rejected. You tried the second time, you yeah. didn't give up. He kept on keeping the hope and you made sure you try to understand a bit about korea like try to learn some few words in korean language try to know a bit of information about korea because it's important for you to always like try to research about the country you're thinking of going to study there so that you could like say those things during your interview because actually you went through an interview during the selection process so you have to like at least make them understand that you've been researching about the scholarship you've been researching about south korea right yes i think those things equally do play an important role very okay well. thank you very much bro thanks a yeah, lot for giving right. me this opportunity uh yeah. i guess if our viewers have any information or questions they would leave it at the comment section and then in case there is anything I, I believe you're always there to answer our questions when we'll seek your help next time thank you very much and yeah have back. a nice weekend thank you okay bye 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 bro